Hello, uh, good evening everybody. Um, we just wait for a few more minutes and we get started. So I see uh, Coach Peter is here. Good morning, Coach. Hey, how are you? Good morning, good evening. Uh, sounds like we got a little bit of both going on. Uh, yes, so uh, let's wait a second. We, we get started and we just starting live on Facebook now. <laughs> oh, fantastic awesome yeah. can you believe Hopefully this technology you. you're here in florida and you're talking to people yeah, in this Asia. Is, yeah this is uh it's been a really strange three months but i feel like i'm more connected to the rest of the world than i ever was before so it's good yeah okay good good all right so um let, let's get started so um one second Okay, um, good evening everybody uh, in Asia um, and good morning everyone here in US or good afternoon everybody in Europe. One of these days we will have a US college sport camp in Europe, okay? So um, if you never attend our um, webinar before, my name is George Duomini. I'm a founder and the CEO of US college sport camp. So we start our organization back in 2013 uh, basically, we want to offer opportunity for young athletes to learn, compete, and showcase their sport talent in front of the U.S. college coaches and possible learn about opportunities to come here um, for their education and sport here in the United States. As for myself and my team, we are all about sport, and many of us have been through this process before. You know, we, we all start with love the sport, compete competitively in junior, and uh, come here to U.S. for, um, you know, college uh, sports scholarship and continue to our dream in the world, you know, as can be business or professional in, in many uh, aspects of um, the dreams. For my story, um, you know, I came, it was long, long time ago. I would say once upon a time, 30 years ago, I was a Thai national junior tennis player. Um, I, I had a dream like you or, or, or your son or your, your daughter um, to be a professional uh, tennis player. Um, I play uh, junior Wimbledon, I played junior French Open. Um, I went up all the way to um, ITF number 45 in the world. And of course, I had a dream to uh, play professionally. But back then, you know, a long time ago before Paladon Si Japan, if, if you know, he was number nine um, in the world from Thailand. Um, you know, with that, I, 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 I just like everybody else, I attend um, Chula Lungkorn University for a year because they give me a sports um, scholarship and also give me um, a free entrance rather than, you know, national examination. I, I just get through for my uh, tennis quarter. So I attended for a year, but it, it didn't fulfill my dream because I still want to uh, play professionally. So I asked my dad, um, can I drop out of school and uh, come here to play uh, uh, professionally? And long behold, my dad said, go ahead, follow your dream. So we, we dropped out from uh, Chua Lung Khan. It, it was Banchi Finance Department that was back then was very difficult to, to um, get into accepted. So I came to Nick Military in Florida for um, stay for a year, you know, long behold. Uh, back then was number one um, tennis academy in the world. You know, they trained Andre Agassi, Pete Sampras. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't make a round. So I figured out that, you know, professionally, it's, it's going to be tough. Um, so someone told me there's a college sports scholarship that you can play tennis and get a degree and, and all this stuff. So I said, all right, let, let's figure it out. So I went four year in South Alabama. We went all the way high. Um, you know, when I started them out, um, we were 100 something. By the time I finished, we were um, number 10 in uh, Division One. Um, so I played number six there for four years, never moved up anywhere. And uh, by that time, um, I say, all right, let's, uh, let's go with a career professional route. So I went to MBA um, at George Washington and worked for Morgan Stanley in finance for about 25 years. And you know, about eight years ago, we, we started this organization called U.S. College Sport Camp. And our headquarters is in Thailand. And um, our team, uh, dedicated team uh, in, in Thailand, uh, service uh, anybody who want to our help and also organize the camp. Uh, we are the largest camp organizer um, in Asia. So um, 
too bad this year that it's not happened. You know, by this time, this summer, we probably should be in Asia already. We operating in seven countries. And, um, you know, and now we, we start working with opportunity rather than college itself. We also provide opportunity for, for kids to come for high school here because many college plan, you know, especially today we will hear from our guests um, have very, very highly competitive um, sport program to uh, career the pathway um, to college. <clears throat> With this webinar, you know, the COVID started. So we, we started webinars about two months ago because we, we want to stay connected with you in Asia and all the communities there. Um, we invited um, coaches, uh, experts, our partner in, um, from different field to connect with you at your home because we were quarantined for uh, a few months. Um, there were many subjects, there were many coaches um, that talking about uh, their opinion and advice to uh, you and uh, family to do different things during quarantine. If you want to watch our previous uh, webinar, you can watch a video from our website. Um, I can share you our social network in a little bit. So um, you can certainly go into our website and watch the past video, um, you know, at your leisure. As for housekeeping, um, we want to make sure your microphone is muted all the time so our guest speaker can, can speak clearly and uh, everybody can, can hear them. Um, so they, they will speak about 30 minutes and we will leave about 10 to 15, 15 minutes for Q&A. And uh, for the Q&A, uh, during the presentation, if you have any question, you see the bottom of the screen say chat, uh, please go ahead and send the message to me um, or send it to, um, to uh, uh, the coach um, and they will answer or we will answer all your questions at the end of the presentation. Today, we have a special guest, um, Coach Peter, um, to discuss about the key to success of college prep swimming program. We also have another guest, a young lady, a nice Thai national team swimmer um, team from Thailand, um, Olympic Hofu 2021 now, it's not 2020 anymore. Um, and, and she trained under Coach Peter. She will also share her thought uh, about the program. So if you ask any high competitive swimming uh, swimmer in the world, you know, what's the best place to train and study uh, in the high school level? Suddenly, both school uh, is, is certainly is one of them and probably the most mentioned to everybody. Um, the bowl school uh, swimming and driving program has been outstanding. Um, I don't know how many titles they have, there's so many, but uh, they are well known for produce so many athletes um, that in Olympic, um, 59 of bowl school uh, students has been represented uh, their countries respectively. And, but the one that I know of is Joseph Schooling. Um, I, I'm not in the swimming world, but Joseph Schooling is the person that uh, I know that uh, came from bowl school per se. So Coach Peter is a head coach and aquatic director of the bowl school and the bowl shark. And he's starting back January, 2019. Coach Peter, just like me, you know, went through the whole thing. He swam for uh, University of Georgia. Uh, undergrad and, and he's also a double major, um, is more than me, and management in MIS. Um, after he, you know, he graduated and, and then also during that time, he was a finalist at the 2004-2008 Olympic trial. And uh, he was a captain of 2007 World Championship and also received the, the silver medal at 2005 World University Game. Um, after you know, to be an athlete uh, from the coaching side. Um, he worked with David Mesh, uh, Team Elite program um, that produced uh, many uh, Olympic, and he can, he can tell you, you more in a little bit later on. And at a few years before he joined uh, Bowl School um, as a head coach, he served as a senior coach and the highest performing director at Swim Mac in Carolina, in Charlotte. And he worked with the senior um, one program that produce many top athletes, but one of the plow that he, he has, um, for sure he can tell you more um, about, you know, the team that producing the most scholar uh, All-American in US. So Coach Peter, um, good morning and welcome, sir, 
to the program. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate the introduction. I, um, I forgot about most of those things, honestly. So thanks for uh, bringing that up. That was nice. <laughs> so, well, I will, um, what I've got today is I'd love to talk to everybody about, uh, about college preparatory swimming or, or getting ready for uh, going into college and international competition. I think it's really important that you know, for a lot of us, it's, um, I think we, my experience with that Team Elite program in Charlotte and Coach Marsh, we had uh, in both 2012 and 2016, we had six U.S. Olympians and uh, brought back about 10 or 12 medals uh, from that experience. And it really taught me to value uh, the international, um, you know, programs out there, the international meets out there and, and allowing athletes to get ready for those. And I think what is unique, and I'll start this whole thing by saying this this way, you know, the U.S. is the best swimming country in the world. And it's it's not because of USA Swimming, the organization. The organization of USA Swimming is directs our national team. It helps our club programs, things like that. They do a great job. I like USA Swimming. They're phenomenal. Um, but our Olympic team is the best in the world because we have so much swimming in the USA. So young children have access to the sport in their neighborhoods um, and teams. We have, um, and you'll see our part of our program, we, we have competitive swim programming for ages seven and up. Um, by the time they get to middle school, they're starting to make a commitment towards that sport. And in high school, we have you know a great team-oriented sport in high school. So you know, I think the, the interesting part is uh, starting at that high school level, you're starting to get this team philosophy driven in, in the program, and that's going to carry into college swimming, which our U.S. college program, the NCAA college program, does a phenomenal job of focusing on a team aspect of the sport, which turns our Olympic team into essentially a super competitive team. Like you would see a basketball team, a rugby team, a soccer team that gels really well and works together. That all starts in our high school swimming programs um, across the country. So that's really the big message I wanna take, you know, get from here. And I, I have a, a kind of a longer presentation, so maybe some of the details I'll skip over and you guys can email me questions if you have anything about training. Um, and then Fresh can certainly jump in and tell everybody, you know, her experience and kind of where all that falls. So I am going to start by sharing my screen. Um, I have a presentation set up here and I'm gonna share this and I'll start, uh, there we go. Uh, George, you mind just give me a thumbs up or a, an okay that you can see that and hear me? Everything is good. I want to make sure I don't lose anybody here. Are you good, George? Is that good? Just a yeah, thumbs up. Good. I see you. Okay. Just want to make sure. I've I've done that before. I ran like half a presentation <laughs> and, and nobody was there. Good. So, um, all right. So bowl swimming. Okay, this is real quick. Just about the bowl school. Uh, we're in Jacksonville, Florida. We have uh, a uh, kindergarten all the way through 12th grade uh, college preparatory experience. Um, we focus on academic and athletic excellence. I think the program, the school itself has, I think, uh, over 20 different varsity sports. We have a boarding program. We have about 800 students in the upper school at 9 to 12th, uh, 12th grade. So it's, it's relatively small, but as far as high schools in the U.S. go, but it's a great size for being able to really leverage um, our program and our athletics. So if you want more information, go to bowls.org. Uh, you can see more information about the school. Uh, bowls as a school operates a club swimming program. So it's a USA swimming team, the Bowl School Sharks. We compete year round. Usually short course uh, is um, August to December and long course starts in January and goes to August. And we can obviously uh, manipulate that a little bit based on international athletes and what their needs are. Um, it's a little bit separate as far as fees and travel costs go to do the year round program. Uh, we have a, over 300 and if you include our learn to swim programs um, and diving, we're probably closer to 400 swimmers of all you know, ages seven to 18 in our program. So the bowl school itself has an interscholastic team that competes for Florida high school championships. We've won over 33 in a row on the women's side, 35 in a row on the men's side. Uh, so that's a great tradition that we have going all the way back into uh, Coach Greg Troy in the 1980s. Um, and there's about 90 swimmers, 90 to 100 swimmers to compete on the interscholastic team. Now, this, the seasons overlap. So um, really, you can think of it as a year-round program. And for a part of the year in the fall, each year we compete for the school, which really provides us a unique opportunity to start working on teamwork 
and just start developing team chemistry with our swimmers and it teaches them about what they're going to need to do in college. So if you want more information, bullswimming.org. Uh, we don't have a whole lot going on right now because of the virus, but uh, you can see our reopening plans and uh, some of our information about our team up there if you want to check it out. So these are some pictures. These are actually, um, this is what our facility looks like. These are, these are in progress right now. That small pool you see off to the left on the screen there is actually under construction right now. It's going to look like that though. Um, and we have some other addition enhancements coming, but this gives you a good idea what our facilities look like. Uh, we're tucked in next to the football field and the track, but we'll have two pools. One is 25 meters by 25 yards. The other is 50 meters by 50 yards or 50, uh, 50 meters by 25 yards. Um, so we can really do a whole lot of different training. We can accommodate a lot of athletes and competition. So we're really excited about that. That's another view of our pool or what it will, will look like once it's uh, kind of, it currently looks just like this. We just have that second story we're adding on. Um, and this is a picture of the upcoming weight room we'll have right on the pool deck. Um, so we're really excited about that. Um, I'm gonna make sure I pull up the chat and then if, yeah. Sorry, I, I wanna make sure I stay on top. So George, if you need to wave at me or, or stop me or interrupt me, or if there's any questions, you're more than welcome to just kind of, you know, uh, put your hand up or say something and I'll pause. So. I want to make sure I try to get all this in and uh, without taking anybody else's time here. So, um, no, that's good. All right. this facility look great. Yeah, this we're really excited about this. This is, um, you know, this is the history of bowls is in this facility. I mean, these these pools have been here. The small pool that's getting replaced over here to the left is over 50 years old. It just needed to be replaced. We're really excited. We got the ISL, the International Swimming League uh, Championship pool from Las Vegas. Got got uh, shipped over to Jacksonville. It's going in there. So it'll be a world-class uh, training and racing facility. We're really excited about that. Um, as one of the benefits of the school, the resources are just absolutely tremendous on that side. So this is a little bit idea of where we fit in swimming. So I, I kind of drew this out and you can see the ages along the bottom and you can see, you know, international competition for some people, but may start around that 13, 14 years old if they're, you know, uh, really up and coming fast. Uh, our part of our program, we, we have a little bit of a, a program that goes all the way down to seven, but the bulk of our program really happens in between that 14 to 18 years old and that senior swimming. And as you can see, it's only halfway through that journey to college and professional competition. So we really have to focus on not only being really, really good where we are, but making sure we're doing things that are going to allow people to be successful in college. And I'll get into that as we kind of get going. So what do we do? We prepare students, I think this is really important. The first thing we do is we get ready, everybody ready for healthy and purposeful lives. I want everyone in our program to come out and have a healthy uh, relationship with the sport, um, with their teammates and with themselves. Uh, and I want them to be driven about, I want them to be excited about swimming. I want them to be excited about competing and what they're doing um, and getting ready for college international competition. Now, so not everybody's gonna do that, but I think it's really important um, that we, we per create, at, you know, we focus on the athlete and the person first and then in help develop them beyond there. So our mission is excellent people and excellent races. We excellent means just simply the best you can do, uh, the best that you are capable of. And we want to make sure everybody is getting access to that. So we want to elevate our performance. Uh, we really talk a lot about growth. We want to just be better than we were yesterday. We want to constantly be, we want our athletes to know that if they're growing every day, and they have an attitude where they walk onto the pool deck and they try to get better than they were yesterday, that is what's gonna make them successful in college. That idea that there, there is always the next thing they can work for, they can always find the next step or the next level uh, to get to. So that's super, super important. And then finally, it, I said it before, teamwork is such a big deal. And this is where we are different in the US uh, than a lot of international programs. We really value teamwork and swimming is an individual sport. Uh, you certainly have some relays and you have a team that will show up. But when you stand on the blocks to compete, you have your own lane. You're one of eight swimmers. You don't interact with somebody else. You don't wait for a pass from somebody else. Um, you don't have a coach that can talk to you during the race. It is all about you. Um, but it is such a difficult sport because of how hard you need to push yourself physically that it is so important to have a great uh, group of people around you. The human body and the human mind is not meant uh, to push itself beyond its limits. It needs other people. It needs a team of people, coaches and teammates to push itself to its limits. So it's really important that we work on teamwork uh, that helps elevate our performance and elevate our growth, not just teamwork that makes us feel good, but teamwork that really uh, elevates our growth. So um, this is kind of some about our program. This is what I expect every day. This, so this is some of the coaching things you would, you would see here. 
I call these the five P's. This is what I look for every day, right? We want people with great posture. Sit up tall, be confident. Sit up tall in class, walk around tall, have great posture, and actually it makes you a faster swimmer. Um, be polite. We respect others. We always listen uh, when people are talking. Uh, we try to be you know, kind to each other. I think that's really important. Be on time, be ready to practice, and be present and mindful. That last one is often overlooked, and I think it's so important for young athletes to learn to be purposeful in what they do. They do not just show up and do what the coach tells you to do. I want you to show up and know why you're doing it, and I want you to know how you're doing it, and I want you to think about it, and I want you to get better at it. So um, this is what we think at Bowles makes student-athletes successful and especially beyond swimming. So these are the things, the core things we want them to get out of our program. We want them to learn how to develop great habits. Uh, this is where you, you get into talk about discipline, right? So we want our athletes to be disciplined. You constantly make the student fresh is a great example of this. She's very disciplined in her work. She always shows up. She's there on time. Um, I really appreciate that about her. Uh, growth mindset. This is where you, you need to believe you can improve and you got to be willing to fail uh, sometimes in big ways in order to grow. Uh, I think that's a really hard thing for young athletes and especially if they're looking to make an international team. It is a lot of pressure, and they need to be able to cope with that pressure and understand that even if they fail at something, they are still valuable, they are still capable, and they are still ready to come back and be stronger. I mean, there are so many stories of high-level elite athletes that failed, and that turned the corner for them to be amazing. So I, I think that's really important that we work on that. Uh, great vision. We talk about setting big goals, but also not just setting goals, but knowing what it looks like, right? If you want to say, hey, I want to be an Olympic finalist. I mean, there's only eight Olympic finalists in an event. So you can, you can narrow down what an Olympic finalist looks like, how they act, what they do, what they train like, how they eat, how they sleep, um, and what they do. You, you can identify those things pretty clearly. You know, there might be some wiggle room in there, but if that's your vision in swimming, you need to know what that looks like and be ready to compete at that level. You can't say that you have a big goal, but then you know, your vision of what you want to do looks a lot more like uh, a recreational athlete, right? You, you have to match your vision to your goals. Hustle is all about work and it's all about finding opportunity. I want athletes to learn how to seek out opportunity. How can I do more and how can I do more with what is given, not just do more for the sake of doing more, but find ways to work hard within what you're doing. Um, and lastly, be a great teammate. Uh, I said it before, I'll keep saying it through this whole presentation, but team culture and inner relationships with our athletes drives our program. It makes the difference in how they feel about bowls. It makes a difference in how they feel about swimming. And it does a lot for our student athletes. So uh, this is kind of the foundations of our coaching. We try to focus on, this is for coaches. If you're a coach, this is kind of, if you were to come to Bulls and say, hey, these are the things we're going to work on as a coach. So I want you to focus on the whole athlete. I want you to talk to the athlete about their mentality, what they're thinking about, how they think about things. Learn about what that athlete, um, how they process information. Learn about how they hear things from you. Do they need a visual? Do they need to be... Um, told? Do they need to write down their goals? Do they need to write down the set? You know, there's lots of different ways we can do that. So um, mind, body is physical, obviously train them physically, and then spirit. Be, be aware of what motivates them, what makes them happy, what makes them sad, what, what, what bothers them or frustrates them, what makes them stressed. Focus on the whole athlete. Um, I'll finish this slide, and then George, if there's any questions at this point, maybe I can, I can do that. But uh, empower the athlete. This is really important. This is very different from a lot of international programs. And this is kind of a new trend you'll see across the U S and our club programs. You know, it is important as an athlete grows, you know, first of all, about 13 or 14, they start to separate from their parents and that relationship in the sport becomes more focused on the coach and the athlete. And at first you, you know, as a coach, you absolutely have to guide them. You have to give them the, the, the tools and you have to show them the way but over time, you want them to partner with you. So what I learned coaching Olympic medalists was most of the time, um, those, those athletes were really 50-50 with the coach. Uh, a great example is Anthony Irvin. He won the gold medal in Rio 16 years after he won his first gold medal in Athens in the 53. Um, phenomenal athlete. So he came to Charlotte about the last uh, 12 weeks of training before Rio, and we coached him there. And I was, I was working with that, the group of sprinters with him. Um, and I think, you know, he, he probably practiced about six times a week. He was a sprinter. Um, he, he probably wrote five of those practices, maybe four. Um, and he, he came in and said, this is what I want to do today. This is how I'm going to do it. And I said, great, let me, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll set it up for you and I'll help you do it. And then the other two, we'd walk in and say, what do I need to do today? And I'd say, I think you need to do this, this, and this, cause we didn't do that last week. Um, 
And so that was a partnership. Now he's 35, he's much older. And so I don't expect our high school athletes to have that, but they need to be, they need to have that mentality that they have a part of this process. They have to have some ownership and some responsibility of uh, growing. As a coach, we want to make sure we're teaching technique and we're, we're increasing training each year. In college, you can train for 20 hours. So it's really important that our program, we stay right at about 18 hours. We could easily do 24 or 26. Um, but what happens when you do that is you do 26 hours of training and that athlete goes to college, they actually end up doing less training than they did in high school and most of them will not get any better. So we want to make sure that we have long-term progress in mind. We're going to do as much as we can with 18 hours. Um, for example, and then we want to make sure your technique is great so that when you go add those next two hours of training in that college environment, it's going to make you uh, get that much better. So um, I say it again, we're going to leverage the power of our team. So our coaches are all in tune to what our team culture is. They talk to our athletes about it. Um, and then finally, as a coach, it's really important that you grow and master your craft. Your goals has a great tradition of producing top level coaches. Um, I think the, you know, currently the, uh, staff at Florida is both, um, former bowls coaches and athletes, uh, and several other colleges have the same thing. So, uh, that's really, really important. So I'm, um, George, is there any questions or anything I need to, um, answer at this point or am I good to keep going? Um, yeah, I would say just go ahead and uh, keep going for now. Okay, great. Um, all right. So our training philosophy, this is about, you know, what, uh, uh, this is a typical club program getting ready for college. So we, you know, the kind of the key of this is, is being mindful or present in training is better than just doing a lot of training. Like I said, I could easily do 24 hours of training a week, but that wouldn't make our athletes ready for college. That would only make them tired. So it, while they may be really good at swimming at that point, we want to make sure we're creating a, an athlete that when they show up to compete, they've been thinking about what they do, they're confident, and they know what they're going to do. So uh, I think it's really important for our, our level of athlete. We focus on long course more than short course. We do more of a long course season. Now, it doesn't mean we swim long course more. It just means we focus on long course swimming more than we focus on short course. Uh, long term, that's going to be the best thing. Even though college is all in short course yards, uh, long course meter swimming makes your short course yards better. So we want to do that. Uh, our training philosophy also, we want to focus on teaching efficiency over power. Power is important. It is important to create power. But as a swim coach, uh, you can get so much faster by being more efficient than you can by being more powerful. So it is so important that we focus on efficiency. In our program, we ask everybody to do all four strokes. You can ask Fresh about how we've asked her to do more breaststroke than she's ever done in her life. Um, and that the reason we do that is we, we believe in I am swimming and that creates an athlete out of a swimmer. You know, if you train one stroke and you train one, one distance and one style over and over and over again, your body becomes used to that. Your mind becomes used to that. You don't become an athlete. We want you to be as an athletic as a person, as anybody, any other sport, a volleyball player, basketball player, any of that. Um, we develop kicking as a stroke. Um, it is so important. We, we do probably 20 to 40 percent of our program is kicking. Uh, dry land and strength program is a key part of our training and technique. So it's not just about getting stronger. It's also about being able to do better techniques. So our core work and those kind of things are teaching our athletes how to be aware of their bodies. And it's so important from age 14 to 18 that as they grow, um, that we grow their awareness. And, and as they go through puberty, they're going to, they're going to struggle with their coordination and their strength that we develop that so that when they go to a college program, um, they're able to handle that load. They don't get hurt. Um, so we train everybody for, you know, either 200 IM or 200 free or 400 IM and distance free. We kind of have a couple pathways in our program. We try to teach everybody the skills to do an elite level 50 to 200 free. So even if you're a distance swimmer, I want you to be able to swim a 50 because you have a great start and a great turn. Um, even if you are a 400 IM or I still want you to be able to swim a 50 fly or a 100 backstroke, uh, because the skills you need for those translate to all those. So we try to teach for those shorter events and we try to train for those middle events and then allow for some distance swimming to happen. Really quick, our season planning, and this is the stuff you guys can send me questions later if you have it. Um, basically it breaks down to, we have about uh, two big tapers a year, uh, one in November, December around our state meet and a December meet and one in July and August. And then obviously we will accommodate our international athletes and we will adjust some things for them as they go. We were in the middle of that process with Fresh this year before uh, this pandemic hit. I felt really good about it. last year. We had a great long course season that went from January to August. That's when our team really took a big step forward. So we missed that this year. So we're going to have to start that up and get right back to it. 
Uh, but that's more or less what our season planning looks like. It's kind of kind of preseason, train to train, train to race, prepare to race, keep it simple, uh, build the work up, and uh, go from there. So typical training week, uh, we do eight practices in the water. Um, maybe one more, depending on the school year. If we have to cut one short, we'll maybe do one more in the water. Uh, about 15 to 16 hours total in the water and about three hours worth of dry land. So we're at, again, we're somewhere around that 18 hours of training mark, uh, give or take. Um, we do everything on a three-day cycle. If some of you have ever heard Coach Sergio Lopez, a former Bulls coach, he's at Virginia Tech now. Um, he was a Spanish Olympian. He, he was uh, an instrumental in setting this program up with Joseph Schooling and Ryan Murphy and that crowd. Um, he kind of had a three-day cycle. So twice in the week, we repeat aerobic quality, speed, and power. It doesn't matter what time of year. We do those three things, and uh, it just looks a little different depending on the time of year. Uh, one thing is different about me, uh, maybe this is personal, but I tend not to count yards. I count uh, our main sets and how long we take on those main sets. Uh, I don't want to get caught up in yardage. I think it's important to know it. We kind of keep a baseline about 4,500 to 7,000, depending on the practice. They need to have some that are more and some that are less, but really my training is based on minutes and number of main sets in the week. So uh, this is some coaching tips from me. Uh, again, I'm, I'm going to, you guys can email me this kind of stuff if you need to, but um, I like to think about giving problem, summers a problem to solve. We do a lot of that around stroke counting. Um, it is so important to get athletes to think about how many strokes they are taking. Uh, if you can take less strokes and go as fast, you're going to be more efficient. You're going to be ready to race. And if you look at an elite level, um, and especially in college, those summers are taking so few strokes a lap. Um, it is so important to develop that as a skill. Um, we put our longer, harder sets earlier in the week. We do shorter, faster sets towards the end. Um, a lot of that, again, is to get ready for those three-day competitions, those college-style competitions, being able to swim really fast when you're tired. Okay? Uh, college competition, if you're not aware, is uh, NCAAs is a four-day swim meet. Uh, most conferences now are a five-day or a three-day swim meet format. Um, and so athletes need to be ready to race for five days uh, and not, not just a little, like racing re multiple relays, three events, prelims, finals. You're talking 15 to 18 races over three to five days. Um, and so you need to be able to swim fast when you're tired. So it is, it is really important we develop that. Uh, we practice that in our competitions. Our club competitions are formatted that way. Our high school is not. Our high school is one day. So we need to do more than what that high school is. Uh, but that is something we want to keep in mind. Um, we build our practices around races. We use games. We create contests, things like that to make it competitive. Uh, again, one of the reasons USA is best in swimming is because we are competitive. We do a lot of competitive swimming, and our coaches are very competitive with each other, but we also do it without conflict. I think that's really important. I see a lot of national governing bodies out there that struggle with this. They, they'll create um, a conflict around who's, who's the best swimmer, and if they have a swimmer that's really good, they'll avoid competition because they don't want to cause a, a problem with another athlete or so on and so forth. And it is really important that you learn how to compete without conflict. So within our team, if there's two girls that swim the same event, they need to be able to compete with each other, but know that one is going to win and the other's not, and that's okay. Uh, we still value everybody. So, so healthy competition is good. And we mix our training. We try to go large and small groups. We have some practices, everybody's together, some which are smaller groups. We try to find time to work one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but we really try to get that done. Uh, this example of a great training set, um, it's best long course, but four rounds of three 200s. Um, I'll share this with you, George, so you can send this uh, presentation out if you need to. Um, but just You can take a look at it, it's just some basic training there. This is a fun fast Friday. I tell everybody it's uh, you know fun for me, or uh, let's see, yeah, it's fun for me, fast for you, Friday for all. Um, and uh, it will... Um, Let's see, we got our dryline strength program. This is, um, this is the other part, big piece of our program. We have a uh, separate, you know, we separate our ninth and 10th graders out and, and they do not go into the weight room. We, we typically reserve our weight room for our 11th and 12th graders. We do get circus style training. We have some resistance. We have body weight bars. We have body bars. We have some small weights uh, we can use. Uh, we coach the movement patterns, make sure they're moving correctly. And we try to get their endurance of movement up really, really high in that ninth to 10th grade years, 14 to 15 years old. After that, they go into the weight room. We do keep our weights on a circuit, on a timer. So you're moving through the weight room quickly. We don't want them stopping, resting, sitting down for two, three minutes between lifts. We want to keep it moving. That way you keep that uh, training capacity up. Um, 
all of our ages do either a quarter to a half of all of our dryland is focused on core work. That is so important. Uh, it, it often gets overlooked as well. Here's our movement priorities. Uh, we do dryland strength stuff. Is number one is core strength and endurance. Uh, it's it's got to be a good 20 to 25 minutes of that type of work. Um, and then after that, we focus on things that are going to develop pull-ups, and then we focus on things that are going to make us better jumpers. So even though we're swimmers, we want to be able to jump. That's really, really important. We go from there. Um, the extra stuff in our program. We uh, talk with our team regularly about our culture and how we treat each other. Uh, we try to address those issues right away. That's a big piece of what we do. Uh, we empower athletes, ask questions. And then if you have a problem, work with a coach to get a solution. We're not going to yell at you if you have a problem or a conflict or school is, is uh, rough on you. We, we want you to come and talk to us about it. Let's figure out a solution. We want them to be comfortable with that process. They're going to need to do that in college, so it's really, really important. Um, you're going to find resources outside of the team, teach them about nutrition, recovery, psychology, things like that. Um, and then finally, you know, our coaches need to make a – plan for the team and for the individual, especially international competition. So that's, that's really, really important. So in summary, our job is to prepare the whole student athlete for success beyond bowls. Uh, we do traditional stuff. We just try to do it really, really well by partnering with the athlete, being creative on how we deliver it. Um, and we try to get the athlete to really think and be a partner in there. We value positive power of our team and our culture. Uh, if you want to know more, you can email me. I'll be happy to send out training or any other questions. Um, I, we're an open book. I'm happy to share anything we do at our program. Um, and that, that is uh, about it. So uh, that is all I have, George. Um, I hope I got through that in enough time. And I'm happy to answer some questions and you get going here. So uh, what, what else can I help with? Well, I, I guess, well, thank you for all this information. And it is, this is wonderful, you know, to learn insight um, um, from you. I, I guess um, number one um, question for a lot of people, especially me, um, you know, what about COVID? You know, what, what, what should they do? And, you know, I, I think in Thailand or Asia, most of them has not swim in the water for, for two months or something. Yeah. So yeah. What, what would you advise? I think, um, so, so, one thing you got to remember is everybody's in relatively the same boat. There's a few teams that have started up. We've been back in the water for a couple of weeks, but we're only swimming about 90 minutes at a time. Um, so we're not even close to a full training, training load yet. Uh, even, even if some people are able to get in ahead of time, I think others are able to do dry land and other training. Um, just, just be, be no, know, know that the world is on the same page, right? There's nobody that's, that's going to jump way ahead here or behind. Um, I do think that we are at a point now, we've been about 12 weeks here since we've been shut down or, or out of, um, you know, in quarantine or whatnot. So um, as we start to come out of that, I do think athletes over the next two weeks, so probably by the end of June, um, if you aren't trying to find a way to be as fit and as strong as possible, whatever that is for you, if it's working out in your living room, if it's running, if it's doing a different sport, if it's something you've got to be doing something by the end of June to get you moving forward. So you're ready to handle that work. Um, you know, when you, when you get back to the pool, uh, the second thing is, I think, um, you know, talking to a lot of the college coaches out there of the last month or so, I think they understand what's going on. Um, they are going to have to do different styles of recruiting. So if you want to go to college, you're in that junior year um, or senior year. Uh, they're going to have you, they're going to have to communicate a lot more with the coaches and communicate a lot more with the athlete and talk to them about who they are and what they do, uh, what their work ethic is like, um, how excited they are about their goals, things like that. So there's going to be a lot more conversation, I think, around recruiting than there was in the past, where maybe just looked at times. I think now they're going to have to really dig in and, and evaluate them as people. Um, so the more you can communicate with those coaches. Uh, you know, email or text or whatever is going to be really, really important or have them communicate with your coach is going to be really, really important. So we are going to try to, once we get back, so I think like uh, August, September, October, uh, we're going to put a plan in place for those athletes to uh, put, a, put a fast suit on and race and film it um, so they can send a video of their improvements to a coach uh, and that, something like that. So it won't be maybe, maybe not about meets, but it'll be about improvement. It'll be talking about, hey, I'm, I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to work this hard and, and help your program. So um, yeah, it's hard. That's a hard question, George, because I, I don't have all the answers. I don't think anybody does, but I can yeah. tell you right now, if you are doing everything you can, um, and you are, you are, you know, working as hard as you can to be fit and strong and ready to go. And, um, you're able to, 
you know, put a plan together when you get back here. I'm, I'm hoping in August, September. Now, if we get a second round of this or something else shuts down, it's going to be a different story. But, and we're all, again, we're all in the same boat. So try not to stress over that. I think everybody's in the same place. College coaches understand that. Um, you know, our elite athletes are training for the Olympics. I think they found ways to stay in the water um, for some of them, but some haven't. So it's really a hit or miss on that side. So I don't think I answered the question, George, but I don't know if there is an answer. So I apologize. Okay, so before I ask the next big question, um, I'm going to launch a poll here quickly. I'm going to be two yeah. polls. So the first poll, um, if you, you know, the, as an audience, if you can go ahead and, and, and answer those, so we, we get uh, more information from you. Um, because you, 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 you know, come to your program at Bow School. It's not only come for the high school, right? Because uh, you have two sessions. Um, one yeah. is uh, um, for student, another one for um, uh, athlete that can train. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we do have the club that extends beyond just our bowl students. We, we mm -hmm. traditionally, it's built around our bowl students, but we do have access to our twin program for non-bowl students. So our club program, yeah. the Bowl School Sharks, has a group there. We also run a camp in the summer. Uh, obviously, this year, it's a day camp for a couple weeks here in July if we get to it. Uh, but normally, we'd run about a five-week boarding camp um, in June and July every year. And that's a great way to get familiar with our program. Um, we try to run that just like we would our swim program and give everybody a feel for what that's like and uh, get them ready for meets in the summer. So that's another really good opportunity I, I probably needed to include that. But yeah. Um, yeah, So this summer is probably gone um, for, yeah, well, for international it, kids. Um, yeah, I, I don't I don't know how we're going to get people into the country at this point. That's the hard part. <laughs> but, we, you know, and I think we, we threw this idea around. We're, we've got about another two weeks before we got to make some final decisions. Um, and if it gets down to it and we can do some virtual coaching or some virtual consulting, we may look at that as an option later in the summer. So if, you, if you're you international and you have some questions about swimming or you would have been one of those people that want to come to our camps, I think we'd be interested in, in at least communicating with you and helping you understand where you're at and maybe giving you some advice or, or um, you know, sharing some of what we do, I think it'd be a great thing. So we're, we're open to whatever it is to keep us connected with that, that greater swimming world yeah. this summer. No, wonderful. Well, then why do they say, you know, the, the big, the next big question will be Olympic. Um, are we going to have it next year? Um, yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I, it's, it's hard to say. It looks like it's heading in the direction where we will. I think there, you know, there's, there's, you know, it seems to be like there's a real interest in, in moving forward. I think there's going to be a lot of safety precautions in place. Um, and I think it will, uh, it will be a different Olympics than we've ever experienced, but I think, um, you know, the, the Tokyo Federation, I think, is well prepared. Uh, that's a great country to have that in, and, and they're going to be responsive and responsible, and I think they're going to do a really good job. So I think it's going to be a phenomenal event. I think the, the challenge is going to be, um, you know, for young athletes that were on the edge of making that, we've got to take a big step forward this fall. Um, and for our, you know, uh, elite athletes who are already Olympians or returning Olympians, they've got to somehow mentally, I think the challenge is more mental than physical, is, uh, you know, keeping themselves in that peak. They've been training for four years, and then they just got to extend it one year. Um, so I think the advantage goes to the younger athletes. I think the advantage goes to those first-time Olympians or those who are trying to get there because I think they, still, they have that chance to get a little bit stronger, a little bit faster, a little bit better, um, and they don't have that pressure of, of maintaining that level over another year. So I think it'll be phenomenal to see how it plays out. I think our young athletes are have an advantage there. And I think, um, you know, I think that I know talking to Ryan Murphy from Bulls, he's done a great job preparing. He's, he's worked on that mental side. So he's ready for that. Um, but I think it's, it's, tar it's a challenge for them. So I'm excited for them. I'm excited for our Bulls alum, but I'm also excited for our next uh, group to come through and hopefully prepare them for that. Uh, whatever that looks like, we, we need to be ready in probably March for, for qualifying meets. And uh, that'll be the next big thing. So you're talking about next March, right? March 2021. Yeah, I, th I think I think yeah, we got we've got to be ready for between March and April for a lot of the qualifying events, uh, maybe into May, uh, depending on the federation and and just communicating with them. I think that'll be a key. So making sure we get back to a great season through December to kind of get everybody back on track, and then starting in that December, we got to hit hit the ground and really put some Olympic level work in, uh, starting right there, so they're ready to go uh, that about 20 weeks later in in March. So that'll be okay. important. Good. All right. So, um, well, thanks again. And um, the next one, we'll, we'll ask uh, French um, to share her thought. And, and she came to you um, in August of last year. Yeah. So this is what, how many months now? 
uh, seven months, eight months? Almost a year. Yeah, almost a year. Oh, like eight, eight months. Yeah, yeah. We're coming yeah. up. Yeah, August. Yeah, um, we're coming up eight, yeah, 10 months. So, so yeah. Um, well, here's the situation. Um, I was looking back and, and fresh and, and us, U.S. College Sport Camp, uh, we encountered it for the first time was back when we did the first swimming camp in Thailand. Right. Go, that, go, that go was, back to that last picture. Is that her in lane two? There she is right there. I see her. That, that's here she is. So, um, um, that was back in 2017, and um, yep. there were a few of them as a, as a high performance. Um, that's what I've been told um, that to keep an eye on. So, um, and, and, and Fletcher is certainly one of uh, the swimmers. Um, yeah, that's her. Uh, the one in here we go. The one in yeah, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> Fletch, are you here? Yes, I'm here. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing good. She's, she's sleepy, right, Fresh? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, All so right. you don't have a practice today? Yeah, no, we have... Sunday, we take one day off a week. It's important to have one day where they don't swim. So, yeah, today's <laughs> our day off, and it's actually uh, storming and raining really hard right now here. So, oh, wow. yeah, good thing. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So, um, Fred, why don't you tell um, us and the audience a little bit what is your experience? Um, you came to Bowl School well, back in August, right? When you're starting out? Yes. What What was your inspiration back then at the camp 2017 and make you come all the way here to U.S. by yourself, stay in the dormitories? So... Uh Hello, can you hear me? Yes. So at first, during 2018, my mom got an email from the uh, some someone in Thailand asked that do you want to train in USA? So yeah, that time my mom so uh, interesting in this this thing so much. So yeah, that that time that we decided to come here. Because it's a good, good thing to. Okay, so somebody uh, contact you back in what? Uh, after the camp or before the camp? Uh, after the camp. Okay. Yeah, I think in 2018. Yes. Yeah, during d d December 2018. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. So you, you, you have an inspiration after um, attending the camp and somebody from my team, I guess, from our team, contacted you if you'd like to come to US um, yeah. for, for training um, purposes. So yeah, um, so uh, what, what was your, uh, what was your uh, first impression at Bow School and the facility and the coaching uh, with, uh, under Coach Peter? I feel that the swimming team is good, it's, it's better, and the program is different from Thailand. I think, as the coach Peter said in here, right now we train 18 hours. Yeah, but as my team back home, maybe 20 or 21 hours. Yeah. So you train so less? Uh, we, yeah, she, and, she, yeah, she, yeah, she, yeah, she trained a little bit less here than what she was used to, and I hope, Fresh, you, know, you tell me, are you, are you getting better in those eighteen hours? Are you trying to do better in those eighteen hours? That's the goal. I, I, how does that work for you? Yeah, I think uh, eighteen hour, I can focus more the stroke and the technique more than twenty one hours at back. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So outside, yeah, she's, of the done, pool, she's done a really good job of that too. Oh, yeah. She did. And uh, how many tournaments or meet? I would say meet that uh, you have done so far since you uh, came here. You say like competitions? Competition, yeah. French. Oh, in high school season we did a lot of meet. Yeah, um, I think every month of the yeah. meet. But during this year we have a. Uh, Big meet the long court pool. I think on in January and February and March one one meet per month. Yeah. Yeah. But in the high school is uh, a lot of meet but in short court. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. High school season, we do about 10 meets in probably 10 weeks. Um, and they're all short course. They're one day, they're much shorter. And then during the rest of the year, we have the bigger three, four day meets, one a month. So it's, it ends up being about one a month for the most part. And then the high school season, there's a lot of small meets. Is that something different from, uh, from Thailand? In Thailand, uh, it's, it will be a big meet. And last, if it's small meet, it's going to be a long court or long court or short court meter. Because in here, we use, in, in U.S., we use the long court yard to compete in the high school season. But in Thai, it will be all meter. Yeah. I see. Okay, so that's a big difference. Okay, well, Fred, well, thank you again for your time and, 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 and your thoughts. And is anybody who would like to uh, learn more about, you know, how to come here in the U.S., please let us know. Certainly here to help. And uh, thanks again, uh, Fred, and keep doing the good work. Okay. Thanks, okay. Rush. Thank you for coming on. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Coach, um, about last word, any wisdom yeah. or advice to share with us today? Yeah. You know, I think um, – I would really encourage everybody, I think, uh, you know, participating in sports in high school and college is such a valuable experience. I would encourage everybody to pursue that to their fullest. Um, if you have dreams to compete internationally, I think there are people out there that will support that. There are programs out there to support that. I think the U.S. has a lot of resources to do those things. Places like the Bulls School are really built to do those things. Um, and so keep, keep looking for those opportunities. I think that the, the experience you gain from that, if you do it the right way, will change who you are and how you do things the rest of your life. Their coaches on here can, can attest to that. So, uh, if you're a coach here, keep, keep fighting that battle, keep encouraging those kids, keep it, keep making them excited about their sport. Um, if you're here as an athlete or you're hearing this as an athlete, uh, keep chasing that dream. Cause I do think that that, the, the things you learn from these sporting, you know, it doesn't matter if it's swimming or not are so important for all of us. So um, I wish everybody health and happiness here from this, um, from COVID and uh, make sure we get through that. And then if there's, again, George, I'll send you my presentation. And then if anybody else has questions, you guys can email me directly. You have no problem talking to you. I'm happy to share whatever we can. So well, thank, thank you again, coach. And uh, um, for your last with them. Um, and also stay yeah. safe with the storm over there. Yeah, we. Uh, I gotta go. I got. I got water coming in the front door, so I gotta go. Oh, okay. Uh, that. <laughs> All right, coach. So, well, thank you again. Thank you. And, Appreciate and, it. And Fresh, thank you very much to uh, join us this morning. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody, and uh, please uh, join us anytime at uh, U.S. College Sport Camp webinar. And tomorrow um, we will have uh, another special guest, uh, basketball coach um, from Selecute and also um, the, the Thai uh, national team player and um, the player who ever been play in a basketball professional league here in U.S. and also um, a lady who um, got a scholarship and, and play basketball here. So tomorrow is all about basketball. But as of today, well, thanks again for joining us and uh, keep um, us in the loop, uh, follow us on the Facebook, uh, social network and, and contact us anytime. Um, stay safe. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.